Hi everyone, I'm Andrew, and in this video we have a two Asus laptops, but a both with some technical problems. So this one has an IMD CPU and Nvidia GPU. Cosmetically, the bottom part is good, but the bezel is broken, and as well some parts are missing. This laptop is not working. When I try to turn on the laptop, the lights are blinking only, and that's all. The other laptop is Asus also but with Intel CPU and AT Radeon GPU. Here, the lock mechanism is broken and I need a spudger to move the mechanism. This machine cosmetically is fine. One key on the keyboard is missing and as well some parts are gone, such as hard disk and RAM and many screws on the laptop. And this is my RAM that I use for testing. And this laptop is still alive. Now I start with a complete teardown. One of the battery fits is broken, but anyway, the battery isn't really good. From the bottom side, many screws are missing, but there are still an out screws to keep the whole laptop in one piece. When I test this machine, there are a few more usual problems. The cooling fan is loud and not working properly. Actually, the cooling fan isn't spinning well as it needs to be. Also, this makes the temperatures rise quickly and above the normal. Also, I had a problem with removing many screws. Some screws are not even from this laptop, and some were sticked using glue or something similar. The CD-ROM is still working, just the front plastic is missing. Also, I always use these plastic organizers, so later it will be much easier to reassemble anything and not lose some parts or screws. Now I remove the cables from the Wi-Fi antenna, and then I remove the Wi-Fi. Now I start with removing the screws from the cooling fan and the heatsink. In some cases, some of the screws can hold the keyboard. I'm not really sure about this model, but it's better to be more precautious. Also, this is the main reason why many laptops are overheating. The dust here is like a carpet, and the fresh air cannot pass through. So this is a common problem with many laptops. Now I turn the laptop from the other side and I remove the keyboard. Under the keyboard we have one more screw, just a single screw. Now I disconnect all the visible cables, because I didn't know what and where is connected. So it's better to disconnect all the cables then to torn some cables and make additional damage. Before I remove the palm rest, I need to remove the display first. And this is one of the things that I don't like when I do hardware repair. There are laptops that you need to disassemble everything just to fix something really small. Also, these cables are very gentle and easy to damage. So the tension here must be at the maximum all the time. Now I can lift the display up and after this we have three more screws in the upper part. And finally I can lift the palm rest. From the inside there are four screws at the speakers, so nothing complicated. I have to remove some other parts here as well, and some of the aluminum foil that is covering some cables. And finally, I can remove the motherboard. Disassembling the display is going much easier. We have 8 rubber covers, and under the rubber are 8 screws. The bezel is easy removable. It may sound like I will break it, but all is fine. From the inside we have 4 screws more, and one cable to disconnect. Now I organize the final parts, and I'm done with the disassembling. But we're still far from done, and now let's move to cleaning. So first I start with the motherboard, and other electronics. Here I use brushes to clean the dust from the both sides, and ports, and I use compressed air to blast even the tiniest dust. Also I used 96% isopropyl alcohol and cotton buds to clean the ports and some contacts and some parts of the motherboard. This motherboard is still in a pretty good shape. 
and I didn't find something critical here. The IMD GPU is still fine, and for luck, this GPU is not overheated. Overheating is a very common problem with the older AT Radeon GPUs. After the motherboard, I took the keyboard. The keyboard still looks fine, and I think the keyboard is still fully functional. I didn't test the whole keyboard, but I didn't find any trace that can assume that something is wrong here. To clean the keyboard, I used self-cleaning clothes, 96% isopropyl alcohol, brushes, and cotton buds. And at this point, I had to be very careful to not damage some other buttons. Also, if any liquid, including alcohol, enters to the inside of the keyboard, it may damage the whole keyboard. After cleaning, the keyboard is looking fine. But before I move to the other parts, I need to clean the pad and the desk. Actually, I'm doing this almost between any other part. Now, I move to cleaning the other components. I start with the trackpad, then I move to the Wi-Fi, then I moved with all other components and cables. And here I use brushes, isopropyl alcohol, cotton buds, and compressed air. Just the standard and usual things. Cleaning the heatsink is going a bit differently. The thermal paste was so dry that I need to use a blade from Sculper. The blade isn't a great idea because I may scratch the surface, but sometimes we don't have many options. So slowly and carefully I remove the thermal paste from the CPU and the GPU heatsink. But on the GPU heatsink I caused a very small scratches, and these scratches may affect the cooling later. So I took a 2000 grit sandpaper and a little polishing until I get a very smooth surface. So this is a very simple technique that will save the day. Now I took the cooling fan and first using brushes I removed the major dust. Then using a 96% isopropyl alcohol I washed the whole cooling. The alcohol won't affect anything here, just will make the things a little bit better, and the cooling fan will look fresh and almost like a new one. And the last part from the electronics section is the display. Here I used a mixture from anti-static glass cleaner and isopropyl alcohol. I used a few soft cleaning clothes, brushes and compressed air. The display is a little dirty, but not much as nose to be. The display has a few tiny scratches, but nothing very serious. After I finished with all electronics, I moved to cleaning the case. The top case I cleaned it using anti-static glass cleaner, isopropyl alcohol, soft napkins, I mean the usual things as always. Sometimes I do not prefer washing this part because I may damage the silver foil which is for the better display reflection. Also here I use plastic cosmetics. Also in this part I used a cosmetic for plastics. I mean this is for cars, but these cosmetics are doing a great job here as well. Actually this will help to cover some of the minor scratches, but the deeper scratches are still visible. Now I move to washing the rest of the plastics and the heatsink. Anyway, Later, I always re-clean all the parts using alcohol and some plastic cosmetic. So many times I prefer washing some plastics, because with washing I can remove all the dust and dirt from the case or the heatsink. Especially the heatsink is totally clean and no dust at all between the copper. Here also I tried to repair the lock mechanism, but I didn't have a much success. And now basically the laptop is ready for assembling, and as well some upgrades. So assembling is nothing else, just an opposite from disassembling. First I start with assembling the upper part, with a display. And while assembling I always do some additional cleaning. Like blasting the dust again, and removing some fingerprints that I've made while assembling. Also sometimes while assembling I do some additional modifications or fixing the loosey hinges and etc. So nothing serious here, just some small details that will make the things better. And this is very usual when you do hardware repairs or some modifications. In general this is not a restoration and upgrades only, it's some kind of refurbish. On this machine is all fine, except the lock mechanism 
for the upper part. Anyway, this is not some vital and very important part, and without this part, the laptop will be just fine. Also, I clean the screws as well, from dust and rust. But I cannot clean some screws in total. So here I used acrylic marker to cover the damage that is over the screws. Before I continue with assembling, I check the buttons and other things on the case. I mean, in case if something is stuck or something wrong. So nothing wrong here, and now I mount the display. Carefully, I connect the boat cables from the display, and I prepare the boat cables from the Wi-Fi. And now I can put the boat hinge covers. Now I move to the bottom side, and here I return most of the screws. Except I didn't place the screws for the keyboard. The next thing is the cooling fan. I back the cooling fan to the heatsink and then I search for some CPU. I already have some older CPUs. This is T9550, which is too powerful, but this one, T7200, is fine for this machine. Now I remove the old CPU and I install the new CPU. The old CPU is a 32-bit, and the new one, I mean the T7200, is a 64-bit, which means later we can install a 64-bit operating system and we can use a 4 GB of RAM. Now I connect some other hardware to the laptop, like the Wi-Fi and the boat cables, and I have done some additional checks. So now it's time to mount the keyboard. But here I had one more problem. The small silicon rubber contact, it was damaged as well. I didn't notice this before, but now the rubber just has fallen out. And to fix this problem, I have to find some similar keyboard. I mean keyboard with a similar silicon rubbers and similar mechanisms. So from this keyboard, carefully I remove the key mechanism and very carefully I remove the silicon button. Now I used universal paper glue to stick this silicon button to the keyboard. And here, using a super glue is totally not recommended. Because the super glue will melt the keyboard and damage is not reversible. And here I waited a little bit until the glue gets dry and then I placed the button. And I mount the keyboard to the laptop. So many other keyboards can be fixed using this way, but not all keyboards. Some new keyboards are not easy fixable. Now I back the CD-ROM and I put the screws from the CD-ROM and the screws from the keyboard. And it's time to upgrade the RAM. I took out the RAM which is for testing and here I will go with a 4 GB of RAM in total. 4 gigs is a too little for today's standards but it's going to be great for this machine. Again, a little compressed air here and I mount the bottom plastic cover. On this machine, I plan to use standard mechanical disk, but for testing, I will use one of my test SSDs. The SSD is not really worth here. It's going to be good with the SSD, but if we do the math, a new SSD will cost the same or even more from this laptop. And as finish, I covered this hole that left from the lock mechanism. Unfortunately, this part was still broken to be repaired. And now I moved to installing Windows, Windows drivers, some softwares and some games. On this machine, I used Windows 7 64-bit. But here I have a little problems to find the right 80 Radeon drivers. So, I had a most of the drivers to one of my data disk, but accidentally I lost these files. So again, I need to work on building my driver collection. After I install the windows and the basic things, I start with testing and using this laptop to see how it's work. This laptop is fine for a basic use. I can play many other games. I mean to games that are from this laptop era. Also, I cannot skip some of this nostalgic card games. And I really try to win one of these games. And mostly I do not win in these games. And as well, I've tried some other games. 
like the Battlefield Vietnam and Delta Force Black Hawk Down. The Battlefield Vietnam is released back in 2004 and the Delta Force is released in 2003, so basically 20 or almost 20 years ago. But you know, when you play some older games like this on some older machine, that's a different charm and experience. The web browsing is still possible here, I used Mozilla to access the web, and anything is still working fine. I mean for a basic things. I can watch videos, read some books, I can listen music, and just the basic things. So in general, this machine is not totally useless. Well, and this is all about this Asus laptop. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back some older touch in function again and have some fun. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.